Good morning and welcome to uh, sharing. Uh, this is All Saints Cathedral. And this being of day five, we want to thank the Lord that you could make it. And we believe that our sharing this morning will be a blessing to you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that in your great mercy you have given us another day. And we pray that as we delve into your word, your word will be a blessing to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, I want to say karibu sana. As we go through this day five subject, we are going to look at verse 16. Yesterday we looked at uh, uh, verse 13 to 15. And today we'll be looking at the lesson in verse 16. The subject is the gospel of Christ is the power of transformation. As I said, yesterday we looked at the inclusivity of the gospel of Christ and concluded that we should not exclude in our outreach or our campaigns anybody. We should not exclude anybody and we should not exclude ourselves either. Today, we'll be looking at the lessons of verse 16. And scholars think that verse 16 and 17 make the theme of the entire book of Romans. Let's read it, verse 16 and 17 together. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And this is the word of God. In this verse 16, Apostle Paul opens with a disclaimer. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Probably the reason for this disclaimer was because Christianity was the new way of life. And people were either fearful or embarrassed to identify with it. And therefore, for Paul, who was among those who are considered educated and elite, to make such kind of a statement, that was quite bold. The elite Jews of Paul's times were mainly in Judaism. Therefore, following, professing, or even claiming, uh, proclaiming Christianity was not popular, especially among the educated and wealthy members of the Jewish community. For Paul, therefore, as a former Pharisaic leader, to make such a declaration was a very, very bold move. Elsewhere, because of his conviction, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 and 24, he says that the gospel of Christ is foolishness and weakness to those who are perishing, and that confirms his commitment and boldness uh, to declare or uh, to proclaim the gospel. That tells you the power that had gotten into him since his transformation. So by this statement, Paul encourages the Roman Christians to not, only, uh, to, not to doubt nor be ashamed to proclaim the gospel, for he knew better. In his former life, Paul had lived and had tried to destroy Christianity. He had tried to change the world and make the world live according to Judaism. They had used the government machinery. They had used the synagogue influence. And if you can remember, even his own transformation, which was dramatic, was on his way to Damascus for more destruction and persecution of the Church of Christ. And therefore, his personal transformation in the hands of the gospel had compelled him that nothing, and because he had tried almost everything, nothing else would bring real and inner transformation than the gospel of Christ. And the city, the, the, the capital city of the Roman Empire needed the gospel just like any other city or village of our modern day. So let us not be ashamed to not only leave this gospel, but also share it with those that are within our network, that are within our contact. Who do we share the, gos the gospel with? Are we bold enough, even in our social media hurdles, are we bold enough to show 
that we are Christian. Then he uses the word gospel. Paul uses the word gospel many times in this letter. Here, this word uh, Paul uses, which means basically means good news, uh, he, he portrays it as the power of God. He says that the gospel is the powerhouse. The gospel is powerhouse. And what is gospel? Gospel basically is about life, death, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power in. And Paul says, this is where the power to change the world is. The gospel is the means by which God has provided for mankind to get back to his loving arms. And it is by the gospel that the world or the earth shall be judged. Even John observed that in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, this is what the Bible says. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. It is therefore in the gospel that salvation is found. Paul says it is the power of God unto salvation. What is salvation? Sal and who is salvation? Salvation for everyone. He says salvation for everyone. Salvation here means deliverance. That in, in the gospel of Christ, there is deliverance, there is safety, there is preservation, there is healingness, there is soundness, you know, all the redemptive acts and processes from justification to glorification are found in the gospel of Christ. Salvation is said to be in three, in three tenses. That is justification, that is pre, uh, past, that Christians have been saved from the guilt and penalty of sin. Then there is sanctification, which is present, that Christians are being saved from the habit and dominion of sin. This still is the work of the gospel. And number three, glorification, what we look forward to, the future. That Christians will be saved at the Lord's, sorry, that Christians will be saved at the Lord's second advent from all the bodily infirmities that are the result of sin and God's curse upon the earth because of its sinfulness. That all this is found in, in the gospel of Christ. And therefore, Paul says salvation is a process by which we are being transformed daily by the renewal of of our minds to us Christ likeness. And therefore, this has been and this will be our theme this year that be ye transformed. What can transform us is the gospel of Christ. If we live by other other things, newspapers, novels, good as they are, the only thing that can transform us, the only thing that can change us to be like Christ, to be renewed in our mind, even in our attitude, is the gospel of Christ. How I pray that one of the, you will consider making a decision for Christ if you haven't, if you haven't given your, uh, 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 your life to Christ. And the greatest favor that you can do to yourself, the greatest favor that you can do to God's kingdom, the greatest favor that you can do to your loved ones and the world at large is to accept Christ, leave the gospel, proclaim it, and share it with everybody within your reach. This transformation is possible through the gospel, it is available and is accessible to all. May the Lord help you as you consider allowing Christ to transform you through this gospel. Regardless of who you are and where you are at, the gospel is a game changer. May the Lord bless you and thank you for keeping here. May the Lord bless you through this word. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.